we're going to move on to talking about the FLT3 uh, uh, mutations as a target for therapy in acute myeloid leukemia. And what I'd like to start with is, Rajit, some comments about the prognostic significance of FLT3 and how and when should we be testing for those mutations? So certainly, uh, FLT3 mutations are approximately a third of the uh, AML cases that we see, and we know them to be among the most important uh, prognostically significant mutations in terms of how patients do long term, their rates of relapse, their rates of survival. And so, you know, without a doubt, a lot of effort has been put into targeting this. Now, the question is, when do you test for it? I think at this point, given the data from the ratified trial, it's our expectation that this is among the genes that should be tested as a standard of care when a patient presents with newly diagnosed leukemia. We would also add to that things like IDH1 and IDH2 mutations. Um, because they are, because the FOT3 mutations are clinically actionable. The turnaround time becomes an issue, pragmatically speaking, when we think about this. And we know from the ratified trial that we don't need to start uh, the mitostorin until day eight, and so that gives one time for turnaround. Um, I think that in general, uh, a lot of mutation testing has seen a market reduction in the turnaround time, but I certainly know this is an issue uh, in a lot of community practices. Uh, possibly less so in academic practices where we can turn around these assays in, in several days and have an answer as to whether or not we have to modify therapy. I think another question that arises from this then is, do you test it in patients who have relapsed disease who perhaps didn't initially present with FOOT3 uh, mutant disease? Is that an important thing to do? And I would certainly argue it is because there is more than enough literature to support that patients can relapse with a FOOT3 clone or who presented initially with a FOOT3 clone uh, relapse with a non-FOOT3 driven clone. So I think the issues of testing are, are very important, but obviously there is variance across institutions, particularly I think when we talk about academic uh, versus in the community. You know, the problem with next-gen sequencing, though, for the FLT3 ITD is that based on the technology and the length of these ITDs, the next-gen panel may miss it or underestimate it. So not only do they take longer, but they may actually miss it. So doing a PCR-based assay is really important when thinking about prognostication and also uh, picking a therapy. But Mark, there was an important abstract presented um, about the position of the internal tandem duplication, which you only could get by next-gen sequencing and how that may impact on outcomes. Did you want to say a word about so, that? Uh, yes, uh, except I think the uh, presenters of that abstract, I was have been aware of this data for years and, and pointed out it's very simple. The longer the mutation, uh, the so the, the issue is where does this uh, insertion mutation occur within the FLT3 gene? Is, is it in the juxtamembrane domain or is it in the kinase domain? Well, the kinase domain, which is further on down, that's an artifact. If you have a longer insertion, it starts in the kinase domain. That was pointed out as a bad thing a long time ago, and I think their data are real, but you don't need to know exactly where the insertion is. Just look at the length of the insertion itself. The, usually the report will tell you, but not always. Okay, let, I'm gonna ask something controversial now, uh -huh. okay? Sorry to do this, but in that report, they showed it based on this position that there was not a benefit in a subset analysis of the mitostorin. So would you advocate using position or length of the ITD to choose patients for mitostorin as opposed to some other therapy, the whatever The problem is. is the length is a continuous variable. Yeah. And we, uh, while in the single agent studies, we do see responses with so-called long ITDs or you know, kinase domain insertions, we don't have enough numbers to know is the response lower. I would speculate the response is lower, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you still shouldn't use it. Yeah. So. And the second generation drugs, more potent and specific, still have the same problem. I, I believe understand. they do, yes. Yeah. Those long ITDs are bad actors. Yeah, so we do what we can do and yeah. yeah.